Good morning. It's Sunday the 25th of August 2019 and uh, the whole uh, tenet of this channel is real, uh, true, educational, not fake news. So we have the serious stuff and we have the, the, the a, li a little more fun by times and uh, Funny enough, I'm going to take my time at this video and it may run into two or maybe three. And it's well worth every piece. Um, I may make the odd mistake here and there, please bear with me. And I can't help thinking back on that song by Brenda, by Dominic Behan, um, McAlpine Fusiliers. Come all ye pincer laddies and you long distance men. Don't ever work for McAlpine or Wimpy or John Lang, for you'll stand behind the mixer till your skin has turned to tan, and they'll say, good on you, Paddy, with your boat fare in your hand. And that was your boat fare, your fare at home. Right, I might do a video on that great song yet, but that's not what I'm getting at here. This is a serious bit of business here. We have a, we have a, a smoking gun or a canary after dying in the mine, <laughs> and uh, I have to maximise its potential. This relates to an article in the Irish Examiner, which in turn was also printed in the Times of London. And it's very hard to get it exactly in line for you here, but it says wind farm owners face financial turbulence. Now, I think, well, let's see, can I get it? That's it. So it's carried on the front page, but it's also carried in an article on the um, inside in the business section. But before I do, I just want to read this little bit on my computer in case the battery goes down. So this is, a, this is a report from John Lang about 2015 because it relates to stuff before 2014. So it's roughly that date. So it's a big expose here. It's on the, on the computer and it's the usual green hype. I don't think you can see it there. Anyway, I can read it for you and that's no problem. Put off the phone. We have diversified our investment interests into renewable energy sector, into the renewable energy sector, to include the global offshore and onshore and offshore wind, solar and biomass, CHP markets, right? So they've, they've decided to get stuck into the renewables like all the other people. This is John Lang. These are a famous builder, uh, like some Cisco or PJ Wall or some of them. They're normally not people we, we associate with foolishness. Now, Building partnerships with experienced developers for assets development and equity investment. So I think you can get that. We have diversified our investment interest into renewable energy sector to include global onshore, offshore wind, solar, biomass, CHP markets, building partnerships with experienced developers for, for asset development and equity uh, investment. So uh, experienced developers, they certainly are good at putting them up anyway, putting up the windmills. Well, they're, they're very good at getting rid of them very fast as well. Anyway, we go on here now. We have dedicated, re we have a dedicated renewable energy team identifying, delivering and operating projects in the off onshore and offshore wind, solar and biomass C CHP um, uh, sector with a particular focus on pre-construction stage projects. Yeah, getting in as they're starting, when the planning commission has got, when the local objection has been overcome by corruption, because none of this is assessed under the SEA directive, right? Target regions include Europe, Asia Pacific and North America. We signed our first project in the renewable energy sector for the development of the pre-construction onshore wind farm in the UK in 2011, then investing in solar in 2012 and biomass in 2014 and our first investment outside the UK was in Sweden in 2013, our first investment outside Europe was in Australia in 2015 and our first investment in offshore wind was in Germany in 2016. So uh, now, so that's that, we'll turn off that now because you have enough of that and now I want to give, I've done a bit of research on this now with the help of a few, few people who I'm very grateful and um, We'll just get on with the video. As I say, it may take a while. Uh, uh, you'll have to watch this because this is the vindication of the dossier that's compiled. This great dossier that we're asking you to support. Um, and everything in it has been proven right. 
<laughs> it's a pity it's so blue and uh, just environmentally destruction because I'd be going to get a laugh at these villain, these ras bloody rascals that push this on us. Not necessarily John Lang, but uh, the whole wind energy and the government that backs them. So here's the article inside the paper. Can you read that there? Yield hit for John Lang. Now this is the first time I've heard the word yield. But in business, in management accounting, the word mix and yield comes in big time. Yield is very important. The yield is actually what you get out of what you put into it. I mean, I'd be probably producing a yield of, of beef. A dairy farmer would be producing a yield of milk and all that sort of stuff. So it's nice to see that word. That word yield, it does bring in an air of realism to this. I've never heard it uh, before by any minister or any government or any uh, wind uh, um, proponent. So I'll just read this over to you here and the aim is to get these few videos done nicely and get them accurately and that you'll enjoy them as well and it's hope, it really is hope, it's, as Bill Clinton said where hope and, and hope and history rhymes I think is what he said. So uh, infrastructure firm John Lang says it is taking a multi-million write down on a wind farm it owns in County Tipperary. In and in Germany, because it is it estimates that the wind that the wind will blow less and generate less power over the next ten to fifteen years than has been anticipated. So who anticipated it? Um, Professor Gordon Hughes of Edinburgh University and myself have told them from 2009 onwards the load factor in the UK is at best 24%. Right? The company the companies a fully owned the company's fully owned wind farm at Glen Carberry, County Tipperary, which has operated for a number of years. Uh, it was commissioned I think in 2016. It's not an old wind farm. Uh, it's 2006, it's only about two and a half years old. And it's uh, roughly 30 megawatts. It's 29.7. We'll say 30 for the sake of, sake of um, easiness. So uh, operate for a number of years. Is expected to have an operating life of a further 23 years. So it's two years up. They're saying 25 years. Will it? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think it's Nordic. Um, Nordic wind turbines is, is Nordic. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not the direct drive type. But they're saying 25 years. Well, fair play to them if they can get that out of it. But anyway, that shows you this coming up. But they definitely don't last longer than 25. And for the purpose of the dossier, we are always using these benchmarks. How long the wind farm will last and how uh, long it will take to pay off the cost. The write-downs come as it prepares to sell its Irish and German renewable energy assets. They're flogging them off. They're getting rid of them. Right? And our government, I bet anything, will try and get Green Coat in there to buy them. With our pension funds and every youngster's pension fund. And old people's funds and everything. They'll pour everything into it. The obsession that Richard Bruton has, that um, Dennis Nocton had, that Pat Rabbit had, and Eamon Ryan before that. This obsession can't be beat. This is like drug addiction. They can't get over it. I know people who have addictions. They can have addictions into lots of things. It's called a set, a set obsessive behavioural disorder. And they have this. But that doesn't mean we don't know they're doing it. My purpose here is to let you know they're doing it. What we do about it is a bigger bigger thing, bigger business. So anyway, I'll read on. It has always decided it was always decided to put on hold any new sort sorry, it was also also decided to put on hold any new solar or wind farm investments in, U in Europe and Australia. So no more green stuff for John Lang. No more green stuff for John Lang. The once-off financial hits, including serious network transmission disruption in Australia, which, which were outside our control, helped send the shares sharply lower. Now, there was an incident in Australia with... Um, with uh, a, a power line breaking down or some power line but also Australia has dumped out the green government they had the green party rejected them totally and put in a new government now that's not in the same league at all and it realizes that uh, this thing doesn't work uh, um, they've, 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 they've went a bit uh, conservative there hasn't been a recession in Australia for 25 years 25 years so they must be doing something right but the voters there are or a mix of English, Irish, and all those. <laughs> Not as stupid as we might think. So, um, had to send the shares sharply lower by 5.5%. So it's hitting the shares. 
It's hitting the shares. And this was covered in the Times of London. And I think John Lang is, is, is uh, registered in London. That's where he started off anyway. And um, so now the shares got a hit. So why are green coat shares not taking a hit? Valuing, now in London, valuing the infrastructure firm at 1.9 billion. So now it's come down a bit. It was obviously more than that. It was over, it was over 2 billion. So it's taken a hit. The public don't, don't believe it's worth that. Oliver Bruse, B-R-O-U-S-S-E, um, told analysis its pre-tax profits for the six months of the year of to the to the end of June uh, I, of 35 million. Now sorry to read that again. Oliver Bruse told analysis its pre-tax profits for the six months to the end of June of 35 million sterling. That's 38 um, euros. Down from 175 million. That's 175 million. That would be on its Europe, um, Irish and Australian renewables. It's not the other things. They do some great work. I mean, if you check them out there, they have a lovely um, uh, rail system in Australia built and they're building stuff in America. And uh, these are good builders. These are, these, are, these are the best. They're not losing in any of that. That's all going well at the moment. So this is an exclusive renewable energy hit. Right, so now, down from 175. Now, just to get that right again, do my sums on this, I take this as a hit of 140 million sterling. It's 175 before, and now it's 35. That's a big hit. Now, a year earlier reflected... Right, it was 175 million a year earlier. Reflected the network transition... Transmission problems hitting all suppliers for renewable power in Australia and did not reflect any issues any with Lang with Lang that Lang owns there. No, it uh, it didn't affect, but it would affect the value of their windmills and their solar stuff because none of this is paying. So it's a wee bit ambiguous there. Certainly there are issues in Australia, but there's a change of government there. I don't believe that this is exclusively to do with a power line falling. Or whatever. Yes, there's instability on the grid. There's blackouts because I've explained why there are blackouts and why you can't allow so much of this in non-synchronous power. But anyway, we'll go on from this. And from the problem of lower than expected wind yields in Europe. Wind yields in Europe. Please don't get thick if I shout at you. I get excited with these great news. So the wind is not blowing as they were told fraudulently. ESB told them that, no, sorry, Airgrid in Ireland promised wind capacity factors of 32.5. 30, they admitted to me that was only a cot. A complete and utter make-up. They picked it off the top of their head. It was 20% last year. Now, so they're learning the hard way. And look at the millions it's costing. Again, we are taking, we're talking about future wind yield over the next 10 to 15 years. So they've done their homework. If they had to look at my videos early on, they'd have seen that I used the air, net, met air, air, net, air, what do you call it? Net, meet Irish Meteorological Service. Met Aaron, sorry. <laughs> met Aaron's uh, wind rose, 1971 to 2001. 30 years I used it to compile my figure. I only came 1% out from Professor Hughes of, Gar of Edinburgh University and he had the figures from the wind turbines. I didn't. I now only get them by accounts. So, so uh, right, now they're projecting ahead using their management accounting. Any good firm does this. It's, it's a lovely art how you project your income into the future. And uh, they they say 10 to 15 years. So that'll see us all. This will see this wind green madness well dissipated by then. Which led to the company taking negative financial write downs on their assets, he said. Mr. Bruce said that the first half earnings were mixed, but the Brazilian company would bounce back in the next uh, in the second part of the year. Now remember, uh, I'll be saying this again because I'm at fifteen minutes. I soon go off. Um, remember uh, that they are, have also seen the June two thousand and nineteen accounts. They've looked at that performance, right? John Lang, in his numerous projects around the world, including helping to help um, provide new trains in the UK on the East Coast and a whole lot of stuff they're doing. Anyway, I just want to take this wee bit. Uh, it mentions here that uh, a representative of the Irish Wind Energy Association 
uh, he's a fellow called Morn, the Mr. Morn, he said, our members are already developing the on and offshore wind farms to ensure we achieve the target, this famous target, right? We are confident that in our par in that in the next decade, wind will replace gas. It's going to replace gas entirely. This is what he says. As our chief resource source of electricity and providing cheap, clean power to homes, farms and businesses across the island. Now, he also said the government's climate action plan seeks to provide 70 percent of electricity from renewable sources by 2030. So clearly they're sticking to their old story and we have to break it down piece by piece. Uh, you'll probably get this article online. So that's it there, folks. Now, this is clip 8A. And I urge you to come back because I've done a lot of research. I'll just leave it like that. We'll break it up, get a cup of coffee or whatever, and uh, come back then to, to us for clip 8B. Can we develop this uh, a bit more? Thank you.